praise the Lord. You've reached past the Priscilla. Let us go to the throne of grace. Eternal heavenly Father. Once again, your wisdom has sent the Son that if we abide in you and you abide in his earthly presence, we will learn from your spirit what is acceptable and pleasing in your spirit. We will have a relationship with you. Not a religion. Not tradition. But a living, active, engaging relationship with our holy and righteous God. A holy one that makes difference in our life. That births wisdom that far excels the way of the world. If we would just trust you and allow you to do your working through these things. We honor you, we love you, we worship you, we adore you. For you are the epitome of righteousness, mercy, and grace that are bad. Lord God Almighty, there is none of you. Father, we entreat you that your will be done for us as it is in heaven. that you continue to seal your people and make them more and more into your image. That we will be pleasing in your sight. That we will have a heart to follow you. And that you will continue to be our providential help that can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think of because of the power that works with the feminine. As we give our life to you, our mind, our thoughts. The very faculties of our mind. Dedicated truly to you. And Jesus' name we pray and give you the glory that you're doing. Amen. 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 I'm going to be coming from Matthew. Matthew 6, R10. And the 19th verse raises that. Lay not up for yourselves treasures where moth and rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doeth corrupt. And where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your heart, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thy eye be Thy whole body shall be full of dark. If therefore the light that is in there thee be dangerous or darkness, how great 
that dark. No man, no human can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise. Ye cannot serve God and man. The Bible says we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the problem with the word sin is that we fail to realize what God is signifying as sin. Sin is just anything, an action, a deed, word, a mannerism, a thought, an intent, anything that is displeasing and dishonorable to God. Even lack of faith. For without faith, you cannot please him. For them that come to him must believe that he is, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Anything we do that's not pleasing and God's sight is said. I was out looking at a home to, that God had taken me to. Been looking for a home for well over 15 years. And I couldn't understand why it was taking so long when God told me to go look. I've been literally looking for over 15 years. And I couldn't understand it all different areas, not knowing where to settle. And today I got dressed. And for most of you who know me, I'm a very organized person. I love my attire. I love my hair neatly done and my manicure neatly done and my attire neatly done and my jewelry has to match. Shoes have to match. That's just how I've always been. For as long as I could dress myself. I'm not a purse person. That doesn't bother me. But I get that and frustrated when I lack organization. I have to be able to walk in my room and be able to have everything that I want available. It's organized so I know where everything is at. Because I get a little irritated because I'm just an organized person. For as long as I've had my own home, I've had organization, and I've been able to live and operate that way. And not having has caused a lot of dissatisfaction. Because God knows what I'm accustomed to. Well, today, I was able to find everything easily, but there's no organization. And it irritates almost to the place I didn't want to go, to church. And I put on new shoes because I knew I had to buy another home. So my logic was, I everything that I would need for my clothing attire and even for some amenities in my house so that when I move, I don't have to worry about the extra expense. So I'm buying all these things. So many shoes, I don't even have any, any place to contain. 
so many clothing items. I don't have a closet big enough to behold them. It would take two rooms the size of the one I'm staying in. And I put my shoes on and they felt fine. And I bought all these shoes because I had injured my toe. And it took years to heal. And shoes would hurt my foot so bad. Just a big toe. And I'm not really an open toe person. I'm accustomed to having closed in shoes. And so it was difficult to find shoes that didn't hurt my foot to the point where I wouldn't even go to church. Because by the time I got there, my foot would hurt so bad. And when I put on open toe shoes, some places I went to, they would step on my toe and re damage it. And today, I put on some shoes and it didn't hurt my toe. So I thought I was okay. I went to look at the house that's not really on market, but it's coming on market. Because I have to look to see the area. Because online, you just see a home. But if you go to the area, you see how the area is. Is it kept away it is from other places, from malls, from churches? from schools, from community places. You just like to know what's in the area. And I looked at the house first. I didn't know what church I was going to go to. Last night, I looked at places that I thought was close. But coming back, I rode in this one place. And it was nice. Hidden back in the fog. And I went in there. It was a very nice service. But when I stood up, I looked down at my foot. And my shoe had fallen apart. Brand new shoes I never wore. That I'm buying and storing up. So when I move, I don't have to buy these things. Because I operate on a budget. That's why I had all my books and everything in my library. So if I ever went to school and I would already have the material that wasn't read, but I have to operate on a budget. It's one salary and I have to budget. If I can pay school, I don't do a loan. If I buy the books in advance, then when I pay for the school tuition, I don't have to put two and $300 for books. I would have bought them and had them in my house. I have none of that. Over nothing. And so when I stood up in my shoe, fell apart brand new shoes, and the pastor was preaching and the music was nice. But I began to think about what God said. Not listening to his sermon. Because my Mine was on my shoes, falling apart. Brand new shoes I never wore. They literally unglued on the side, falling apart. And these are not cheap shoes, but they had been in the house for over 10 years, not worn. And God took me to Matthew 6 as I was coming home saying, lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust do of corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust do of corrupt and where thieves do not break through or steal. The longer I live, the more I make choices based on me taking care of myself as opposed to God, obeying God, following his wisdom in his word, the more I learn more about the wisdom of God. Now, while my shoes and clothes weren't stolen, where I'm at, at my home, they were. So I thought the way I bought everything 
the first time and moved and I didn't have to buy anything because I literally bought everything, clothes, shoes, and everything because I knew I was buying a house and I wouldn't have to worry about those things. And when I moved to my house, I had all those things that was paid for. I, I bought them. Budgeting. Moved in my house in December of 87. And in January, around January, February, my house was completely broken and everything was stolen from towels to sheets to throw rugs through all my shoes and my clothes and my purse. So that was stolen. So this time, I'm looking for homes and I'm focusing on, I have to have a security fence because I know my home was stolen, broke in, everything was stolen, glasses, forks, spoons. I mean, they literally left me nothing. It was like I moved out. And so I'm looking at homes that got a lot of land with no HOA so I can put a security fence around my own home. Afraid that if I move again, somebody's going to break in and do it all over again. So I'm looking in different areas at certain homes that will be able to allow me to have security. Well, as I said in church, because I'm always comfortable in any church I go to, I grew up in the body of Christ. I'm accustomed to having a relationship with God. I'm accustomed to being around people I don't know. I'm never uncomfortable around people I don't know. That's just how God has made me, whether I be in school or church. I can do anything that God allows me to do around people, whether I know or not. It's never been a concern. Why God takes me different places because of the ministry his birth within me. It's a unique ministry. It's a ministry based on the foundation of Jesus Christ, on God. No discrimination. No groupings. And so I can fellowship, can preach, teach, pray, do whatever with anybody. That has the spirit of Christ. And even fellowship with some that don't when I was in school and things were stolen. Nevertheless, as the pastor preached, and I assume he was the pastor, I didn't get a chance to fully acknowledge everybody like I normally do after the service over because my mind was on. Matthew said, God was literally telling me right then and there. You stored up everything for you to leave to buy another house. That's the way of the world. The money you use to store up everything that puts you in debt that you are now worried are falling apart. They're worth nothing. When you would have had enough saved up for as long as you've been here to buy a house in cash. Literally. I've been here over 15 years. And I drove home and I began to tell God, I'm sorry. I didn't fully trust you. I trusted my way. I, I leaned toward my own understanding. I didn't fully acknowledge you. Because if you acknowledge God, you acknowledge his word. And when you acknowledge his word, you hold on to his principles, his wisdom. I wasted money. And ways that God said, don't waste. I store it up and he said, don't store. And everything I have, 
to look at a house. I'm afraid somebody's going to break in and date. The very thing he says, they will break in and steal. He knows the ways of the world. This was written way before I was born, way before many of you were born, way before all of this is going on. His wisdom prevails humanity. And so it was one shoot that was falling apart when I was sitting there. And I refused to allow that to stop me of worshiping God. So I closed my eye and I said, God, forgive me for not doing it your way. But I kept focusing on Matthew 6 because it's in the Bible. And the pastor was preaching a very nice sermon and the people were singing a very nice song. And I was just thinking about the Lord. If we don't hold on to God's wisdom, what we do is prolong things in our life that God would have done sooner. That's why those in the Israelites was in the wilderness longer because they were doing like I was doing. Still operating on what we're used to doing. God told them not to take the food and hide it and show it up, but to take only what they needed for that day. And he would allow more to be given the next day. They didn't trust him. Many times we don't trust God because we think we can do it our way and it's the best way. When if we trust God, his way is the way, best way. I'm worrying about where I'm going to move because I have so many things. I'm afraid it's going to get stolen again. But why? That shouldn't even be a concern. But the reality of the world, it exists. But if I were to put the money in a safe, how much money would I've had stored up? I'm always given to the church, so that's not a problem. But I was buying things. So when I moved, I wouldn't have to focus on buying anything. I figured I wouldn't have to buy anything for 20 years. I would have everything. But what I saw today, everything is falling away. They were stored in a closet with different temperature. You put them on, they're no good. They fall apart. The purses fall apart. The shoes fall apart. The dresses get messed up. The hanger slip and tears them apart. All my ideals didn't profit. I'm seeing it becoming wasteful. And God said, yes, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all not fully obeyed God. We've not all fully obeyed God. That's a sin. Eve and Adam ate off of the tree of life. That's a sin. Disobedient. But yet the world categorizes sin. But sin is sin. Disobedience. I stole it up. Now I'm worried about thieves. But God showed me something today. It's not the thieves. Your things are falling apart. I didn't have the moth to eat them up because they're in a room. If they were downstairs, they probably would have ate up. And I didn't have the rust to corrupt because the items are not able to rust. But they're falling apart. And I didn't get upset. It was sort of 
my Lord, you teach me every day. I know your word. Because he took me straight to the word. That I almost couldn't focus on the sermon. I didn't even acknowledge the people. Because my mind was on. I stole it up. And you said don't. And look what's happening. They're falling apart. But the people in the wilderness, their shoes never wore out. Their clothes never wore out. And they're wearing their stuff for 40 days, 40 years. I haven't worn these shoes ever. They literally fell apart in less than three hours. I looked down at my foot. And they were open on the side. I got home and the other side open. Both sides of the shoes. The left foot and the right foot. Brand new. And the whole time I was driving, I was asking God. I could see the wisdom of God. See, this is not about seeing people. This is more serious. This is more necessary to everyone's life. Take God's words literally, seriously. It has so much wisdom and it prevents so much loss, waste of time, waste of life, waste of breath. That's why God never wanted his people in debt. It was never needful. I remember in 98, he had me to preach a sermon. We're supposed to be the head and not the tail. He was showing me that today. When you go and do things out of the order of God, you put yourself in debt needlessly then you don't know if things are happening. Job loss, thieves, accidents, health issues, anything. And you can lose everything in a twinkling of an eye. You can't take it with you. And the way things are made today, they're not made to last. I bought a car. I've always had Toyotas before I bought a Volvo. And the Toyotas would last forever. But the last one I bought, it was all messed up. My GPS won't even work. My seats are all messed up. The things are falling all apart. This world in this way, are designed to keep you in debt, to keep buying the same things over and over at a higher price. To keep you in debt from one paycheck to another paycheck. Even with our education systems, So many people are in debt with colleges. Even our schools are in a mark. Some are not receiving what they should. And I understand we have rules and regulations, but I read the other day one person was supposed to graduate. And because they didn't have the right shoes on, they were told they could not walk across the stage. And one of the teachers took his shoes off and gave it to the young man, man, to walk across the stage.
It's so much going on. That unless you are rooted and grounded in God, you can't make it today. We want to make it about everybody else. But the reality, it's about God. His wisdom. I'm not talking about the God people versus the Jesus. Because they're not separated. It's the God he. I'm not talking about the school people versus the church. Because we are still saying. Belong to God. And we don't divide our differences the way the world does. And we lack wisdom when we do. Even something so minute as don't lay up treasures upon this earth. I have probably over 50 shoes that have never been worn. I don't know how many will fall apart. This is not the first time. And I didn't even know I had these. I saw them and said, oh, I never knew I had them. So I decided to put them on. Because I thought, literally, I would have only been here for a year. And I would be in my home. So the first items I bought, they all fell apart. So I rebought. Okay, when I move this time, I'll have stuff that won't fall apart. And isn't it interesting? Shoes became a big issue. God knows what human does not know. To remind, to reveal, to instruct, and to correct. And so, as I looked at this, and I did worship, thanking God that he allowed me to be able to purchase everything, but he was explaining to me why I was here for 15 years. I'm trying to buy everything that I think that I'm going to need when I go in the house but I don't have the income. But that didn't stop me from buying. And I've been looking for income to buy a house. Because buying a house has nothing to do with being in a church. We can't fall into that trap. And so I began to thank God for his wisdom. I'm not buying anything else until I get in my house. Which meant being here was not his will. It happened, but this was not his will. Because God doesn't place you in waste. He places you in prospering, not waste. Waste is of the adversary. It's not of God. God doesn't waste your time. He doesn't waste your resources. He doesn't waste your finances. He doesn't waste your health. God is a God of goodness. And anything that's contrary to God's goodness, it's not God. And I ask God, what do I do now? He said, purchase your home. It's coming soon. But don't buy anything else. Wait till you get in the home. I bought Jerry that fell apart, that rusted, that I never wore. 
And I'm not buying this to be seen. That's just who I am. I've done this all my life. That's what I'm accustomed to when I work. So the items weren't for turn. It was for wherever mother be. But I never stopped studying his word. I never stopped preaching his word. I never stopped singing his word. I never stopped abiding in him. It was, I'm trying to work out a house issue that God told me to go and look. And I couldn't understand why he would have me looking with no income to purchase it. Sometimes God wants to take care of you. And in taking care of you, he wants you to just obey him literally in every area of his life. So he took me to the home that could give me the fence, that could give me no mortgage, that has the space. Then he took me to a church that's not that far from the home but in another direction that I not plan to go. And my shoe fell apart. And I still enjoyed the service. While I was among people I didn't know. But the genuine love of Christ was there. And I was not afraid and I was not scared and I was not concerned. And we had communion that those do who are saved in the Lord. And I appreciate being able to have fellowship in the house of God. I don't preach what I don't do. But I would not be a member of a church because I wanted to be close to where I live. And I didn't want to be active in a church and live an hour or 40 minutes away. I don't want to commute. And so what I decided was until I moved, I would do everything I'm doing, but I would not join because I don't know where I'm going to live. It had nothing to do with no other reason. And God was showing me today. I just wanted to take care of you. Like I did when I put you in that house. And you were trying to do what you did when you first bought that house again. Which was what you would have done for someone who knew to stop me from being at my company. Which is how I bought the first house. And God said, it's not going to be the same this time. Because the first time you were working at Blue Cross and Blue Shield. And you purchased the house through your salary and your 401k. When they broke in and stole everything you had. And you were able to buy everything back. And every year you got two and three raises, literally because of your work performance. And you stayed in church, never missing a day out of church when everything was stolen. But this time, someone did medical. Nobody ever did medical before. Something I would have never been involved in. I work in computers, not medical. Insurance, not clinical. So the plan did not work. God has his plans, his camp that stands forever. But humanity's camp will prolong what God would do. 15 years because this is not God's plan. Humanity got in it. And it extended 
what God could have done in a year, in a twinkling of an eye. Humanity cannot change God's riches for his selection. That's impossible. Whoever thought a house was red, whoever thought a church was red. You can't change what God is doing. So as I sit there and meditated on Matthew 6, Thurman, was not coming out of Matthew 6. The sermon was coming out of Corinthians 12. And I listened to the Corinthians and it was great. But God was giving me another message while I was there. And if I hadn't went there, he wouldn't have given me the message because it wasn't a place I had planned to go. I had looked at other places the night before that would be in that area. But God took me another way. And I'm glad I went because I will be back. I will definitely be returning back. Not because I want anything. But I will be returning back. I didn't go there as a mother and I didn't tell him I was a pastor. I never told him I was a pastor. Sometimes I don't let everybody know I'm a pastor, but many knew who I were. And God have great things for that church and I'm not saying it to beguile anybody was just the spirit of Christ's friendliness. They weren't afraid of differences. And that's what the body of Christ is about. Differences. As God works within each one individual. Now, maybe if I would have said I was a pastor, I would have preached. I don't know. But he didn't have me to say it. And I'm glad that I didn't because certainly my shoe had fell up. And God would have known it. So what am I telling you? That in this passage where God talks about alms, prayer and forgiveness and our treasures and how we can't serve God and mammon. I wanted to go back to Blue Cross and Blue Shield to buy a house. That wasn't going to stop me from laboring in the church. I just never wanted to get a salary from the church because the one time I got a salary, it became more of an issue of me having a salary than doing anything I've ever done in my life in the church. So I was so hardened by it that I said I would never, ever work in a church and get a salary. I don't want to go through that again. I just want to work for another organization and then do whatever I do in a church. When God places me at a church. So my salary won't come from the church. And nobody should have a problem. Like somebody did before. Nobody cared until I got a salary. And then it was always an issue. What God said, I determine where I'm going to put you at. And you will not be back in the computer feed. And you will purchase your home. Because I know your heart. 
You never came to a church to give. You've always given. And the adversary was always jealous because you always give. You don't go sit any place without giving, whether you give there or give online when you get home. You've given all your life. And the one time I was giving back to you, habit came out of jealousy. And that wasn't even much because you made more at a corporation. And then you go to the corporation and havoc comes there. And you're single doing all of this. So you had to work to provide because you don't depend on anybody. Because I didn't create you for dependency on humanity. I created you for dependency on me. So I wouldn't compromise. I kept sending out resumes, buying clothes for work and church, not knowing which way God was going to take me. Even going to school while I'm waiting for God to find me employment. Even keeping up all my skills. And God showed me. Because you've been faithful. And many don't understand. This is your life. This is serious calling. I place upon your life. And the adversary wanted to use a home to frustrate not having one. Because everything I had in four bedroom, I end up going into one bedroom. That's impossible to live that way. And it took me years to get over the frustration of someone destroying my life over foolishness. My life is not a game and nothing I do for the Lord will ever be a game. My home was never a game. God gave it to me. I don't know anything about that. And I don't want to know. I just want to be obedient to God. And so I will ignore certain things. So that I can be pleasing in God's sight. And I was so glad I went. because it was a beautiful service. Never been there before. But the enjoyable part was, I stood up in my shoe, fell apart, where many couldn't notice. And as I walked out to the car, I saw the other side of my right foot falling apart. And I ask God, why are you allowing this to happen? Why? He hasn't answered yet. He just took me to Matthew 6, 19 and talked about our treasures. He knows my heart has his treasure. He knows that. But I could never understand why I'm here. Because God never told me to come here. And normally God tells me. And so God was showing me 
This was not for you. This was humanity. That's why you're still here 15 years later and nothing has been accomplished. Because if God had done it, I wouldn't still be here. And much has gone on since I've been here that proved it was never of God. Because God does not do certain things, although it was allowed. When we do things out of the will of God, it affects a lot of people's lives. What does me being a mother have to do with being here? I was in my own home. So what is that about anything? What does colors have to be about being a mother? I was at a church as a pastor. I don't have anything to do with going back where I left. So then God told me, humanity wanted to take you back, but that was not me. I wasn't doing that. Humanity was. That's why you're still here and not in your house because of humanity's decisions that was not in agreement with God. So then he told me, you're going to have to forgive. Forgive those that ought against you. Their plans over God's plans. So when we say our actions only affect us, no, it doesn't. Because somebody's actions impacted my home and everything I've ever purchased that went in storage that I no longer have. That's why I was buying all these things I could so that when I moved, I knew I had to buy all furniture. And I don't know why anybody wanted me here when I was in my own home, minding my business and ministering before God and working. What does a true mom have to do with anything if it's ministry? True is I'm really called. Why did they make it about a mom? Whose child was you making it about? Humanity's ways and plans. That's why it changed from being a pastor to a mother. That's why it changed from me being in my house working and God told me, forgive. Because I'm going to do this for you. And everybody involved, you will never be around again. That's why he has me looking at places that I won't be around. People's personal agendas. Because this is not about being a mom. This was about being a pastor. And whoever made it about a mom was never a pastor. And I don't know where that came from or why. Not even to this day. So I don't even know why that even involved me. So as I sit there and worship with God, 
God told me. And I was honest. Somebody said, why were you here? I told him I was looking for houses in the area. And I decided to come to the church. I've always done that. Just that when I bought my house, I was already at a church. So I bought close to the church. So I wouldn't have to come in far. And then when I went to a church and got paid, it was further than I would have been. But I commuted. And when I didn't have to commute, I refused to commit that far. I go to a lot of churches that are far. But I can't do that every day during the week and on Sundays. It's not practical. There's nothing wrong with me where I can't drive, but it's not practical. Summertime is fine, but what about winter? See, I'm thinking in advance. If I have to be there, I can't stay home because it's winter. If service is open. So I think in advance. That's why some companies don't want you at certain places. If you can't get there within so many miles. They'll ask you, do you want to relocate? This is not about a girl or a boy. It's really not about your colors. It's about, I'm really called by God, a woman of God. Whoever tried to make me not that I was warned, they're going to try to make you not a woman of God. And I wonder why. Because somebody was afraid of losing something by me being a woman of God. And they pulled other people in their personal agendas. And I don't know why. And it's sad because you can't change what God validated in man. And when people get in other people's agendas, they lose out on what they could get from God, not knowing other people's motives and why they're doing because you don't have all the facts and all the truth. And I can't get in it because God says not to. So I endure and let God take care of it. So as I look and say, lay not up for yourself treasures, upon earth where moth and rust and do corrupt. I see the blessing from God. When you don't fully trust God, you can see the wisdom. I didn't need all those shoes. I could have waited till I moved and just kept the money. But they won't sell, so I bought them. Figuring I'm saving money. But in reality, I'm not. I can't wear them again. Unless I take them to the shoe shop and get them fixed. Which means I didn't save. Because what I save, I now got to spend to get them fixed to wear again. The wisdom of God. Then it talked about stealing. I'm looking at houses because I'm afraid somebody's going to break in. Because too many people know me where I go. And my house was broken into. I wasn't there three months. And literally everything was stolen except for furniture. I, my furniture was stolen. They had a company to put it in storage, whatever agenda they were in. And I never got them back. They stopped my salary so I couldn't pay them. And I almost bought furniture, put it in a storage for me to move so my furniture would be paid off. I was thinking about that today before my shoes fell apart. I would see I'm always planning because it's only me 
one sound. And I was saying, okay, I like this house. I see the houses I like. So now I'm going to go to a store. I'm going to buy my bedroom, my family room, and my kitchen room. And I'm going to pay cash, put it all in storage, so that when I move, I have that paid off. I was going to put it in layaway, then put it in store. But after this, God is telling me, don't do anything until you move. What am I saying? It's impossible to please God if you don't fully trust him. And if you fully trust him, do it his way. It may not make sense why or he's saying, but he knows everything. Now, there was something in this program that says, as a church, God has entrusted us with the gospel, which is the power of God for salvation, Romans 1, 16 to 7. Everything that we do is centered on the person and work of Jesus Christ, believing that only the gospel transforms the person's heart used to advance the gospel. That is true. The gospel, whether it be sung, preached, or taught, or spoken in everyday conversations, it is the gospel. That's why Colossians, see, that's exactly what Colossians says that. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. I am not a singer, but I can. My ministry is not musician, but I can. Worship is not just about your music. It's about honoring and acknowledging God in everything when we come together in the body. It's not an entertainment. It's a ministering to God. I'm not trying to be in a pulpit to be seen, dressed up. That is not what this is about. This is an outpouring of God's heart, of his ministry, so that we don't waste our life and time that God knows many are doing. God is able to keep you from falling, from falling from his pleasing sight. From falling from his pleasing sight. Whoever made plain about a church I admonish everybody please don't fall for that entrapment please don't fall for that entrapment God is not playing and this has nothing to do with this place or any other place I'm just speaking from my heart God does not do that that's impossible. God died on that cross, Jesus. There's nothing playful about that. It's a sin to do that. That's falling short of the glory of God. You get what God gives you. And if you focus on humanity's giving, you'll miss what God is giving. There was nothing I ever wanted. I was already in my home. Don't fall for what somebody is doing. I went back to my career. There was nothing to want there. I was already in my home. I had my car. I have a child. There was nothing to want.
I'm already was at a church. There was nothing to want. And I was very satisfied. Thing though. And I'm not in your time agenda. I didn't want your ministry of music. That isn't what I wanted. I didn't want your kids. That's not what I wanted. Wasn't doing the kids. I did kids since 1992. So why would I want that? Was doing adults. And I'm not your kids. I'm the entire church. I'm a pastor, not a youth minister. I'm very clear of my calling. But I don't go to a church for nothing. I'm there for the Lord. This is not about an in or an out or up or a down for me. I can no longer partake of people's personal agenda. This is too serious for my life. And somebody still has the agenda. Whoever first tried to make me married, that I wasn't. And whoever secondly, make it about my child when I'm already working and doing everything for my child. That's impossible. And I'm not getting into anybody's thing that I do as a ministry. Because ministry is confidential with God. Ruth was just, I'm really called by God. And when I deal with people, whether it be in the body of Christ in the church building, school setting, or any other place, they know me no other than being a woman of God. And someone warned me that these people turned against, that they were going to try to do that to me because they were having lawsuits. And I'm minding my business, it won't get in. And am I hurt? No. Because my faith and trust was never in humanity. It was always in God. Am I concerned? Yeah. Because I can't understand why I'm here. I'm not a child. I'm a grown woman. And I've always worked. And I never had a man to depend on. That's impossible. other than the Lord. And so I'm not whatever someone is trying to put me into. The color. I've been read with the women's ministry at the United Methodist Church. I've been blue with the children's ministry at Riverside Baptist Church. I've also been black and white with the choir ministry at New Fellowship when I was also doing kids. But I can tell you, I would have never been under any family member as a pastor in any of those colors doing anything with adults or kids. And maybe that's the problem. I'm not a part of that. And maybe that's why there's such a big issue. People's agenda that changed when it was always about the Lord. 
not a family member in their child or anybody else's child. I've never in my life been in a church where we made any of this about anybody's person or child or mother or father. It's always been about God. And when they did blue, they just did it covered by the blood. That wasn't blue, that was red, covered by the blood. When I left the Baptist and went to the Methodist. And so as I close this out, let me bring this to closure because this is the last message about this. I've never been up under family as a pastor for them being my pastor, doing anything with kids. And the ones that I did kids for, I haven't done that since 1992. So I would not be involved in any of that. Since 92, I went in 93 under the conference. Adults, music, Bible, pulpit preaching, Sunday school, worship service, vacation Bible study, all adults. I was not over the youth ministry, that's somebody else. And that pastor's no longer at the church. No pastor would have ever had anything to do with my personal home or my personal vehicle. I'm not under anyone because I'm not being pulled into people's personal agendas that God is not authorizing me to participate. There's nothing I want. I had it all. It wasn't anything to want other than leave me alone when I was working at. And nobody has that job. That's impossible. And it wouldn't have been about kids because it was the kid side coming to the adult side causing concerns because of the money I'm making for adults that you're not getting with kids. It was never about school for kids. I don't get paid for that. And all of this that has happened, someone had personal agendas. And it has gone too far. Beyond that I've been here for 15 years and their personal agendas that won't stop. That I'm not a part of. That's why when I go to these churches, I don't say I'm a pastor. I don't want somebody to put me under somebody and I'm in their agenda. Your credentials, I'm not under. I use pastor under God's covenant. I cannot say I'm not because of people's issues and personal agendas. I have to be first dedicated to God. So I acknowledge the calling from him. It's not from a people. It's not from a place. It's from him. This is over 15 to 18 years. I'm not. And so I have to speak. Out. 
because I can see how people can be drawn into things because of people's personal agendas. There was nothing I wanted other than to stay where I was at working that had nothing to do with anybody. And buying a house has nothing to do with who's in a church or not in a church. That's why I don't even say I'm a pastor. Because some are biking about a church versus a house or a car. When I was at a church, in a house, and in my own car. And so whatever someone else wants to do, that's them. But I have to let it be known. I'm not changing who I am. I've always dressed a certain way. I've always bought, had my own home, decorated the way I wanted it, went to school and worked. I'm not changing who I am because of people's personal problems. What I've never done was worn a wig. What I've never done was had a foot injury. What I've never done was cut my hair. And what I've never done was got involved with whether you're married or not and try to edify one or another. Or with kids, how they were born, single or married. And I've worked with kids since 83, and I've never done that in my entire life. That is between them, their parents, and God. I don't even do that with pastor's kids or any other occupation of children. When you come to the Lord, you're coming to the Lord. You're not coming to me. I don't make it about you coming to me. You're coming to the Lord. And I've always done that. So when I say that, I'm speaking about the God here. And that's for adults as well as children. If you are around me, it's going to be about the things of God. If it's not going to be about the things of God, then we don't have anything in common. And I'm not going to change it. I did green. As the adult choir, I didn't direct it. I directed at Grace. Before going to resurrection. I'm not into all of this that has been occurring over the years. This is the last time I'm going to discuss it. Your green means nothing to me, your colors, whether it be blue or green or any other color. If you want those colors, those are fine. But I can't have anybody to try to put me in an area they want so they can feel superior. And that's all this was ever about. I have no hostility because people are people. And I can understand because they didn't trust God. 
and not trusting God will get you to do some things. And I'm not concerned about your hot or your cold. God doesn't change based on humanity's weather. And someone is personifying an interest that I don't have and making people think I'm coming there for a reason that I'm not. even sitting for a reason that I'm not. Sometimes you have to sit to get out of people's personal agendas that you don't have anything to do. Phones. But nevertheless, I love you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by his mercy and grace. But you have to know who you're dealing with now. And don't assume. Because it's been 15 years and more. That's a personal agenda. That's not God's. And I've been very patient. And I only move when God tells me to. And I only reveal when he instructs me to. And it's been very informative to see how people can make other people think you're a part of something you're not. And that is very disconcerting. Because when the Lord returns, I wonder how many people will be into something and not know and think others are involved. It's very cunningly done, but with a very motive. There's a time for everything. And some things have to end for God to take you through. God had to stop some things in the wilderness for him to take the people into the promised land. But for them to go into the promised land, some had agendas that they just couldn't let go. So they would not want to enter into the presence. Personal agendas should never override God's agenda. I am the same whether I'm in a schoolhouse, a church house, or my house. I'm the same, no matter what I drive. There's some made that about a house. I can't get into that. I have to stay focused on the Lord. Because they have it not been for God, I would not have made it this far. It's been difficult. Very difficult. And frustrated because I had my own and it was nothing to want when you have your own. It's almost like something was done intentionally for me to want and that's impossible. And so as I close this out, 
that God reminds about showing up in heaven. But I never thought I'd be here 15 years. What is the game for 15 years? That's impossible. Which means I haven't been up under those people in over 15 years. So I'm not a part of it. I should be able to buy and do whatever I want to. Work where I want to. Minister where I want to. Truly, God gives us a freedom of choice. And God knows best. He doesn't have any personal agendas. And I'm not going to go stop going to church. Why should I? Because I'm going for the Lord. I never went to a church to ask anyone for anything. But I do like to know the churches that's in the area where I live. This is not about food or drink for me. I don't even know how I got to that level. As long as I've always been in the church, they've never made it about food or drink. Not like now. In fact, you couldn't even have beverages in the sanctuary. Couldn't even have them in our classroom at a school in college and in seminary. So I really don't get into that either. And I don't want people thinking I'm in stuff that I'm not. And I can pick up, but I just don't say anything. Because it's not frightening to me, but it's frightening that so many people can be deceived and think everybody's in on it. How can that be? And that you have to be very cautious. That's how cults come about. And I'm not calling anybody a cult, but that's how that can come about, cults. And we know what happens with cults. So we really need to pray for the body of Christ, to pray for the schools, the seminaries and colleges, and to pray for a lot of things. And the reason being is, truth will set you free. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust do of corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. We see out of our eyes. That's what God has created, the eye. 
visual image. And the Bible said that if our eye be single, we're seeing the same thing. Not double vision. Not double views. But the same that God is revealing. Then the whole body shall be full of Jesus Christ's life. If we're seeing what God is doing, if we're seeing what the Lord is doing, and we are in one accord of his doing, then the whole body shall be full of him. And not darkness. Not on one side for music and another side for body. I've been both. And this is not the first time this is happening. The last time, there was a division over Bible and music. Never food or drink. Just Bible. And that went on for years. So I was in the schoolhouse, in the church house. Between Bible and music. Now we have Bible music and drink and food. I don't know anything about any of that. And that's not to say we don't eat in a church or we don't drink, we come together to fellowship. No, because a lot of time we have services and we'll have food and drink. That's not what that's about. It's that those things should never be edified over word of God. His wisdom, word of wisdom. What we drink is not going to put anything up. What we eat is not going to put anything up. What is lifted up, Lord Jesus Christ. He says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all people. Jesus Christ, he does the drawing. He is the exalter. Anything not exalted by him will never be exalted. That's all God is saying. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And so when I go to visit places, I don't have a personal agenda. I'm not there because you're Caucasian or because you're African-American. I really don't see your colors. I know that's hard to say, but that's what God meant when he says, if you have the eye of single, the whole body will be full of light. We're not seeing like the world. We're seen as the body. The oneness that he is. I'm, I'm encouraging those who are in the body to continue. To trust God. Those in seminaries and colleges to continue to trust God. And let any personal agenda just weed its way out and work its way. Out. And due time it will. If you keep your eye stayed on him, he'll keep you in perfect. And everything else will be weeded out by the Lord. Because of who he is. The kingdom of God. Let us get ready to pray because he's worthy. I don't sit down for nothing. I just try to stay out of personal agendas.
because it does not edify Christ. And what doesn't edify Christ? It profits is nothing. If people want to do that, that's for them. But God protects. And I don't get in. Jogging has nothing to do with church. That's what I do on my own. But I've been at churches where they had exercise. I've never been in. I don't get in people's personal thing. I'll try to support them when I can. And when I can't, I don't. I'm just so thankful and blessed that God has given me an ability to go several places and be able to function in the Christ I have in me and stay true to who God I love preaching and I love music. And I would never get involved between the, for me, there is no division. They all go together. That's not for everybody else. And I understand that. But for me, they all go together. I don't look at one over another. But I know they are from an organizational structure. And each place would be different. But I'm not driven by humanity once or orchestration. I'm compelled by God once in orchestration. Because after all, that's who died on the cross for me. And people who really appreciate God and know what he has done for them, you're going to be very sensitive to what's going on. Now let me close up. I'm going to try to close up with this sermon that I said I was a little distracted with because I um, my shoes interesting. Not to a point where it bothered me, but it was quite interesting. They were talking about the body being one and saying members and and you know how we should appreciate everybody in the body of Christ. And we should. We have ushers, we have trustees, um, we have um, uh, people, parking lot attendants. Uh, we have people to do many things in the body of Christ, from administration to music to clergy, you know. And um, sometimes I like to go places and not let people know who I am, not for no reason. I'm not afraid or ashamed of the gospel. I just like to know how a place really is. Um, if Jesus would come, there, how would we treat one another? And, you know, I try to uh, do everything uh, according to how the churches function uh, within their parameters, because they all have different ways. And um, there's a lot of wonderful churches, so nobody could say they can't find a place to be a member and participate if God is leaving them. And normally I go to a lot of places and I have a lot of database, but I would even refer people to these churches, not because one is greater than the other, 
I normally would just say, oh, you live in that area? And they may say, yeah, we're looking for a church home. They may say, well, you know, I went to this place. You may like this place. And they will go and end up joining. It a lot. One of my girlfriend's husband joined a church because he's a man and he didn't want, like churches. And she couldn't keep him active. So I knew a church that had a lot of men. And I referred her to that church. Took her husband. He joined it and he stayed there to the day he passed away. They were at that church for over 17 years. And he was very active. You know, I may go to a church and see they, they have a lot of children doing things. Some people have kids. I say, well, that, they, have a, they have a youth ministry. You might want to try that place. And they like it. One has a lot of uh, marriage ministries where they go on retreats and do a lot of things. I may refer a marriage couple there. I don't have a problem being around single or married. I mean, my Lord, you in a church, you're going to have that. But that never bothers me. But obviously, somebody has some concerns. But they have to take that up with God. Because the only marriage I have is with the Lord at this moment. And that's been like that for a very long time. And so the Bible talks about that God has set in the church. Prophets, teachers, healing, health, government, diversity of tongue. Now, I don't know how to, I don't know anything about working within the government in the church. I've been in the church as a pastor, I function as a teacher, I function as healing, and prophetically, and diversity of tongue, but never as a government. I know it exists, but I haven't. And the gifts are in the house. And it wouldn't be just one. When God told me at a place that I was worshiping and exalting him, and he had me to do a prophetic exhortation by saying the gifts are in the house, he didn't tell me all the gifts. He just said they were in the house. That didn't have anything to do with a church versus a school. I was in a school building when I said it at Friendly High School. So now you know my mind is very functioning well. Never had mind problem. Impossible. But I'm at Friendly High School. And I said, the gifts are in the house. Now, why he had me to say, I don't know. He didn't say gift. He said gifts. Meaning that he has multiple gifts at a location. We could try to understand from the human perspective and say we have teachers here and teachers there and singers. And no. When we all come together, there are many gifts operating at one location that may be operating someplace else at another location. God determines it. And he often reveals and shows us. And I operate under more than one gift. And I personally don't exalt 
one from another. Now, normally we'll try to acknowledge the head that's in the house. We do that as normal protocol from pastor to pastor. When you're going to someone who's in charge, you like to know who when you to greet them as is possible. And I normally do. The Bible says to honor. And you should. But sometimes with this pandemic and COVID going on, sometimes you want to be friendly and you forget. And so, you know, you may leave without going back and doing a hug or, you know, saying, you know, anything, but it's something that you do. This, this pandemic has changed a lot of things that we took for granted. The ability to do a lot that we did. You know, sometimes we have to rush in and out because of all this stuff going on. And that's rightfully so. We can understand that. But that's just something that happens. The body of Christ prayed up. I was blessed being able to go out and look and then go to another place. I have to go back to something else this evening. But I just um, want to bring this to closure. That we are one body and we have several members because we are unity under believers. But I don't um, edify the school over the church. I just don't. I'm not the church and I'm not the school. I've been both. Jesus wasn't just a prophet. He's also a savior. He wore many hats. He operated under many gifts. It's not a gift humanity can have that Jesus didn't master. He's the giver of all good things. And so I don't get into church versus school. Because I function in church Christian education, in the church and in the school. And a lot of schools have churches in them. And so I really don't function like that unless I had a teaching degree that's state approved. And I don't have a state approved teaching degree. I have a gift from God to teach but I don't have a state approved accreditation teaching degree. And I think some people forget that. So if I do that in a school setting, is normally under a instructor, a teacher, who has the state approved teaching degree while I'm there because they are overseen. But normally I function in the church and in the school. I've been in both simultaneously. Go to school during the week and go to church on Sundays and during the week. I never looked at them as different, just different settings. One in a classroom and one in a pulpit. But I like them all. And it's not just about singing.
because certainly I've done more than just sing in the church. Now, if I'm visiting, unless somebody asks me to do something, I normally don't do anything. And I know what the attention is, but I just don't. Not for any reason, because I'm not trying to bring any disorder into the church until everybody fully understands what I'm doing. And don't assume that I'm being orchestrated by a person. So let's bring this to closure and have a word of prayer as we continue to pray for the body of Christ and pray for the school. For everything that's going on. Pray for the kids that are in school and pray for the seminaries and colleges and because of everything that is happening. Because it's just so much going on. So we don't even understand. I don't have people coming to me personally. I mean, they would because I had an office, so they use a lot of my material. They may call me for advice, an exegete of scripture. This with different teaching lessons and things of that nature. And prayer, we had a prayer line. So we were doing a lot of extensive prayer. But we see the workings of who's worthy to be praised. The precious name of Jesus. The Lamb of God. Let us get ready to pray. I just, I didn't get a chance to go to the women's thing because I was looking at a home and I had already made plans for that. I didn't get a chance to go to their uh, service. But I had them in my prayer. Can't make it to every place. But I can't pray. And sometimes if I think it's going to be crowded, I like to have people to go that otherwise wouldn't be able to go. Sometimes I used to even want to be able to go. I would, instead of me going, I let somebody else go um, on my behalf so they'll be able to uh, to go. And I love music. I like to hear people in all different types of music. No, it's it, you 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 understand later why I'm doing that. It's not for no reason that people think. It's just something sometimes God will have me doing. is embracing and enjoying people's different music type. Yeah. Yeah. And encouraging people that's doing the music. Because it's not easy. It's not easy. Not easy. I don't know how some of those musicians play. When I first sat down to try to learn how to pray, I appreciated musicians more than ever in my life. It's difficult to play all those songs, do all those notes, and remember all of that. And sometimes we take each one for granted and don't realize that even the pastors, when we when I have to preach, they don't realize how much you got to study and labor before the Lord and get all of that together. You know, we need to appreciate people in the areas that God has been working and gifted in and pray 
that God will use them in the area that he has called them for so they can be effective for what he's doing in their lives. Sometimes we take things for granted. Let us pray. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you, we honor you, we love you, we worship you, and we adore you. I thank you for the body of Christ, God. I pray that you continue to pour your spirit out upon them, seal them, heal them, provide for them, give them direction, instruction, and revelation that you will be highly exalted and that they will see the overflow of the abundance, not just in the house of God, but in their personal homes, as they honor you, obey you, live for you, trust you, and treat you, be thankful unto you. We pray for those kids that are in school, all that they had to contend and deal with. Some people didn't have their kids to make it out. They didn't live to graduate. But others have. Things that we took for granted. We pray for those, God. We pray for those looking for jobs. Some don't know which way to turn. Statistics are showing that many jobs are available. People are saying where they at. They can't find them. They're not getting them. And it's not paying them what they need to live on. But we know, God, you're still on the throne. We thank you for being who you are. Holy and righteous and pure and true and honorable and just in all your ways. We thank you for every pastor. Every assistant pastor. Every bishop. Every auxiliary staff. Everybody in the body trying to work together to fulfill your will. We pray for those who are not working in the church, but working in other places, that they may fulfill your will. The body of believers, we pray for them in everything, in every way, that they will come together in unity. We pray for officers who will now have to be involved in the body of Christ because of the things that come and happen. We pray for them, God, those that are in the schools watching over the kids. But we know you're watching over everybody. And so we pray that you'll continue to do that. We pray for the singles, the married. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I ain't got nothing to do.